70s, the bombing of Kaho'olawe only added insult to injury for a frustrated generation of young Hawaiians. The idea that their people were being denied access to a Hawaiian island, an island being destroyed by the U.S. military, would spark radical ideas and become a daring avenue for searching out a new sense of identity. What is the Hawaiian way? We didn't know what was the Hawaiian way. All I knew was we got to stop that sucking bombing. We have to stop that bombing. In 1976, Charlie Maxwell of Maui decided to organize an occupation of Kaho'olawe to draw national attention to the historic injustices suffered by Native Hawaiians. Joining him were activists from Huialaloa, a group that had won shoreline access rights for Native Hawaiians on Molokai. Three of the leaders of Huialaloa were George Helm, Noah Emmett Aluli, and Walter Ritty. We got a call from Charlie, and I, he wanted um, somebody to do the hunting to feed everybody. So that was was that was my thing. <clears throat> so. I'm assuming I called you and George in because the three of us ended up coming over to Maui. So it was, it was all secret, secret kind of stuff that night. You know, nobody knew what was happening. It was kind of organized uh, by uh, Uncle Charlie Maxwell and the Native Coalition for Native Hawaiian Claims. Emmett came to my house to tell um, my mother about going to Kaho'olawe and I happened to be listening in the back, background. I was 20 years old. Emmett was going to Kaolave. I didn't even know any, anything about the island. And um, being that he was going to go to Kaolave, I was thinking, man, I'd like to go there, you know. Could I go? And he's, Emmett said, you want to go? Let's go. So when we came to Kaolave, the um, helicopter was hovering over us. And um, the Cape Nawagan was there, and they was yelling to all the, the boats. We're gonna confiscate over your boats. We have all the numbers from your boats. And so some of my friends, all fishermen, they were all Puiva because they used that for fishing, you know? And then Charlie says, we gotta go back because the, we're being threatened by the helicopters with the megaphones and whatever, that they're gonna confiscate all the boats. So I, 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 was, I never I go back, but I was like, hey, I gotta get on that island now. The Coast Guard car went follow on all the helicopters. So Walter guys saw that they would turn around and they come and they would they would land on the island. George landed just to touch the island and then left. And there was nine of us. Well George left right away. Yeah. Because you and I left. Yeah. We went Malka. But you you jump off first. And I knew that the Coast Guard was on their way. They landed and they served and they were there with their badges and this and that. And that was basically the beginning. I think they were looking for you two. You guys were gone into the hills. So by that afternoon, everybody was arrested except Walter and Emmett. So they came looking for us. We, what, we hid in the, in the we hid crevice, for, yeah? We hid for a long while, for about a couple hours. Yeah, we jumped in the crevice, covered ourselves with grass, and the helicopters came up and went right over us. <laughs> yeah. So. Then we kind of like just hung out there a little while, and then we just saw all kinds of strong things. Yeah, well... We was over there looking for the mana, looking for all these kinds of things like we see in the movies. Huh? But we never know that that thing crawls through you from the ground and then slowly into you. You know, it's not like in the movies. When we first land here and when we leave here, well, it was really clear that we had to have other people come to Koholabi to experience what we've experienced. News of the daring Koholabi protests had spread throughout Hawaii. Impassioned by what they had experienced, Walter and Emmett set off on a second illegal landing two weeks after the first. Seeing how deeply affected Walter was by the experience, his sister Scarlett and his wife Loretta chose to go with them. I looked at him and I really knew that he changed. I really knew something. He was different. So it was late. I said, I want to go, take me. He was driven by something deep inside of him to go back. He just needed to go back. 
And so um, he asked me to go. So that's like Scarlett, like, yeah, let's go. <laughs> we was in a darkness. The boat got stuck. <laughs> we was freaking out. I said, oh my God, what am I doing here? <laughs> then they fixed the boat and we started getting closer and the island got bigger. And I, that's what I can remember is just staring because out of nothing, this little island kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. You know, and when, when I came back, I couldn't express to people because they had no conception that why the cause was so great was because here was just like there. But they, 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 they never know. You know, you just, they just never know. A month later, through negotiations with the Navy, the activists won the opportunity to legally access the island for cultural purposes. This time, the activists were accompanied by respected kupuna, the elders and practitioners of Hawaiian tradition. They were of the thought that if you didn't have a proper Hawaiian opening, you ain't gonna make it or you're gonna die. You gotta open the island with ceremonies. You gotta offer a black pig, Ava. You had like Uncle Harry Mitchell camp out that night uh, preparing the pig and you had Carl Mowat, and you had about five guys, only five guys that could be there to make the preparations. And then came, I think, about 60 people. And um, people just jumped off the boat. And, and everybody swam in, had the ceremonies, had the offering, had Auntie uh, Emma DeFries walk the beach, and the winds changed, and nobody could leave. And so the helicopters came in to pick everybody back up. By spring of 1976, controversy surrounding Kaho'olawe had divided the Hawaiian community. While some praised the emerging activists, others criticized them for being too radical. But the protesters pushed on. They formed the Protect Kaho'olawe Ohana an organization with the vision of freeing Kaho'olawe and returning her to Hawaii's people. In essence, our concern is toward making pathways for the proper use of Hawaii's natural resources, her people, her land, her waters, and all which comes willingly from the Aina. So our feeling is just a feeling of love for our Hawaiian people. George Helm, a charismatic young musician from Molokai knew that unity and support among Native Hawaiians would be the key to saving Kaho'olawe. Eloquent and honest, Helm worked passionately to inspire and educate his people. Kama'aina means the child of the land and every one of you that have that Hawaiian blood in you is a child of this land and you are attached to it whether you like it or not. <laughs> you know, and you have that blood running through your veins. And if Dick and Jane, if the Dick and Jane book's not gonna make you proud of what you are, then Kahawalavi is going to 